This thing is honestly something incredible. This thing I have leads to great innovation. In fact, 50% of all NASA employees have this thing. One third of every successful entrepreneur has this thing. And the good news is that here with me today, one in every 10 people in each row have this thing too. So congratulations, you've already won in life. Thank you. But this thing also has a lot of negative connotations. Having this thing just 10 years ago was a major educational catastrophe. You are doomed to fail and you're already set up to dry as if you weren't going to succeed. But what does this really mean? These are two contradicting things. So why don't we take a step back to when I realized I had this thing. I was in primary school in Mallorca, Spain, and I was about eight or nine years old. It was a sunny Monday morning, so there was no reason for a whole class of eight-year-olds to be upset. But the reason for that was that we had just had a recent spelling bee, and our teacher had given us the results of the spelling tests. Now, no one was particularly happy because they hadn't done very well, except for me. I'd gotten a 19 out of 20, and I'd put in so much time and sweat and effort to get these 20 words, words right that I was over the moon, and this was my greatest achievement yet. So I wanted the whole class to know. I raised my hand and asked the teacher, Miss, are you sure I got a 19 out of 20? Even though I already knew I had. But then it all changed. The whole classroom went silent, and my teacher slowly turned around pity drenching from her pores, and said, Jess, sweetheart, you do realize there's a negative sign in front of that, right? Well, it turns out that I'd gotten a negative 19 out of 20 and made 39 mistakes in 20 words. So if you ever thought you had a bad grade, I think I still beat you. But what does this mean? This meant that I became a failure. In the eyes of my peers, I had this thing that made me different. Everyone knew my secret was out, and I couldn't hide it anymore. So this thing I had became shame, and I couldn't hide it. To make matters worse, my teacher asked me to step back during class to read for her. Now, I wasn't happy because it was recess, but I thought the sooner I got this done with, the sooner it'll be over. So I sat down and started to read, and my usual reading symptoms kicked in. Sweaty hands, shaky palm, shaky voice, everything was going wrong. And when she asked me to recall what I'd read, I turned completely blank. This is because the words had hit me like an avalanche, a wave of words that just completely dried off of me. I could not recall one single thing that I'd read in the past five minutes. But for, this, for me, this was normal. So I didn't know what the big fuss was about. But my teacher got an idea. So she asked me to get tested, tested to figure out what this thing that made me different was. So I did, and the results came in. After two weeks of agonizing, the results were that I had dyslexia. Now, I'm not sure if you've heard of dyslexia, but it's the world's most common learning disability. Like I said, anywhere from 3.7 to 30% of the population has this thing. But what does it really mean? So let's break this down. Dys is difficulty, and lexia with words. But it's a bit more complicated than that. It has a neurobiological origin, and it's hereditary. So let's analyze the way it affects the brain. Well, when normal people read, the way they process it goes through the left hemisphere of the brain, where words and math usually happens. But for the, but for the rest of us, the dyslexics, it all happens on the, on the right hemisphere. Because our brain sees the world a bit differently, and we use the creative side of our brain. Because innately, the human brain wasn't made to read and write. When we were ancestors in the Stone Age, we didn't have to. So what does this mean? This means that our brain hasn't adapted and sees the world in a different way. But this is a lot of jargon, and I understand it might be confusing. So how does it truly affect me on my day to day? Well, I'm going to share three things with you. The first comes with a confession. I am 19 years old and still can't tell you left from right. 
this might be some trouble when I'm learning how to drive and my dad tells me to turn left right now because I might crash into a car. Or when I'm in an airport trying to get to gate B16, but it's actually D20, but I read it wrong. So they're constantly little obstacles which we need to face, which other people don't even think about. It's the little things that we constantly need to overcome that for you is a given. So we become ex ex excellent problem solvers. In, in fact, Einstein was a problem solver too, and he was dyslexic. The second thing is, we fail a lot. I write my name wrong most of the time. Here, you can see my notes that I took to prepare for this talk. As you can see, 77 mistakes for two paragraphs isn't too bad for me, but may seem catastrophic for half of you. But we don't really let failure get in our way. We know that it's a given. We know that it's part of our day to day. So we don't let it stop us. Because you fail, you move on, which is what entrepreneurs do. And the third thing is we become advocates for ourselves. I have a law final to, on Monday morning, and I need to read a 300-page book. Now, I'm not prepared, but I also didn't read the book because I'm aware that even if I did, I wouldn't understand it completely. So I asked my peers to support, for, to support me. I'm constantly asking for help over and over about the dumbest things, directions, anything, because I know that this is going to be hard for me. And the way this translates is that I also help others, because as I'm helping myself, it doesn't become so hard to become an advocate for others. So we become resilient leaders. But what's the common denominator in those three things I said? Problem solving, resilience, and leadership. Well, those are three essential traits to succeed in life. It's like dyslexics have a mini MBA since we were born. It's something that we're trained in day in and day out, even if we need to overcome big obstacles, like reading, which seems natural for most of us. We are getting trained to become resilient since a young age. OK, so now that you know this, I want you to take away two things from my talk. The first one is that it's important to realize if a kid has a learning difference or a learning disability from a young age. In fact, dyslexia can be detected as young as three years old. So if you're aware of one child or someone you might know that, has a, that struggles with reading, with writing, that has messy handwriting, get them tested as soon as possible. Because through that, the negative reper repercussions that you'd get if you found out when you were 12 or 13 become less because you get to have accommodations. And, I, and you get to have extra time, which is incredibly important when you, become, when you go into college and you're faced with the disparity of taking an SAT test when you can actually read what's on the test. So that's incredibly important. And the second one comes with a metaphor. The same way the supernova was a major catastrophe, it disrupted the whole way the universe was. But it also gave us gold, silver, and even ourselves. So it might not have been that bad. That's the same way I want you to think about your thing, your thing that makes you different, your thing that makes you stand out, your greatest struggle, because that might just be your greatest strength. Thank you very much.